Hey guys, it's up, it's Ryan, and I haven't done a tutorial in a long time. <clears throat> Sorry. So, now I have been learning C Sharp, and today what we're going to be doing is using Web Client, and we're going to be using um, System.net, and we're going to be connecting to the web by a um, user inputted URL and grabbing the HTML of the page. So, this is a really good introduction, and it's a really good, I guess it teaches a lot about C Sharp in a way. Um, if you might even notice that it's almost like Java so we're gonna jump right in. So you want to create a new project and by the way I am coding C Sharp on a Mac using Xamarin Studio it was previously mono develop but now they I guess I'm not sure if mono develop is still out um, I used it once before but apparently um, I learned I started learning C Sharp around the same exact well day that Xamarin Studio came out which is kind of coincidence but I love the program. It's one of the greatest IDEs I've ever worked with. It's probably better than Eclipse, honestly. So we want to create a new console project in C Sharp, and we're gonna call it um, let's call it Web. Doesn't really matter. And I'll save projects. <sighs> okay. So we're greeted with the main.cs class. So first things first, we're gonna we're, I'm gonna clean up my code a little bit because I don't like the way that they have that C Sharp is formatted actually. Um, the namespace is basically the project name. Um, the class, leave that as main class. I just like to clean this up. I hate how they have it. Okay, so we don't need string arguments right now because we're not going to be working with them. Okay, so now we have our hello world. We can get rid of this. Okay, so we're going to make an, a method a uh, static void. It's basically just doing like a, a public void in Java and we're gonna call it prepend HTTP not app domain. Okay and it does not put brackets for you if you go like this it won't put one like after it but that's alright. So, okay so in the main method we're gonna have to make some variables and yeah so I actually recommend making these global across the application so we're going to make a static string, and we're going to call it URL. So the URL is basically the heart of this application. It's going to be what's directing us. So now what we're going to do is, under our main method, we're going to want to get the URL from the user. So we're going to do URL equals console dot read line. And what that does is it's basically like a, um, a Java scanner. It works the same way. It reads it from the console. So now what we're going to do is we're going to um, call our method. So we're going to call prepend HTTP. And we build that, we should have no errors. And underneath, well, we're, not, we're just not using this yet, so don't worry about that. So under prepend HTTP, we're going to, first things first, we're going to make sure we have access to our, okay, we have access to our URL. So what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if they didn't put HTTP in front of that. I didn't mean to type that. But if they didn't do that, the web service will not work. So what we're going to do is do if not um, URL dot starts with HTTP colon slash slash. Then what we're going to do is we're going to alert the user. So we're going to console write line. And we're going to say error no HTTP new line adding one so we will take care of that for our lazy user I want to lowercase this n actually and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do URL equals quote HTTP colon slash slash no, <laughs> plus URL so basically we're just adding it to the front I guess it's a cheap way of doing it but it works so now what we're gonna do is we are going to actually create our web client so we're going to get out of this if block and we're going to do web client. Oh, we have to, the first thing we have to use is using system.net. So now we're going to do web client and we'll call it wc equals new web client. So now we created it. Now we created a, um, a new object for the web client. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a byte array. So byte data equals 
um, WC, which is our web client, dot download data. And we're going to take that data from our URL. Okay, so now that we have this, we can create, well, now we can actually take that, um, the byte, and put that into a string. So we, we're just going to create a new string. We're going to call it, um, uh, let's call it body since we're loading from HTML. And we're going to type in, uh, we're going to do encoding.ascii. So in this case, we're going to need system.text. So we're going to do encoding, coding dot ASCII dot um, oh we have to get the string so dot get string and we're gonna get that string from data now that we have our data we can console dot write line body and we're gonna hold up the console so console dot read key and now we have our our data so basically what we did was we created a new instance of a web client we created a byte array of data, which was coming from um, it's down, which is downloading the data from the URL, and then we're creating a string called body, in which we change that to ASCII and get the string from data, and then we write the line of body. So now, if we run this program, I think we should actually just write um, console dot write line enter a URL. Pretty self-explanatory. So now we actually have our methods correctly working. Like I said, this is a lot easier than Java, I, in my opinion. So we're going to run this. For some reason, it opens up two windows. I don't understand why. So we're going to type in, uh, what's, a, what's an easy, not Google, because that is a lot of data. We'll just type in Minecraft.net. So it says error, no HTTP, adding one. So what it does is it adds it to... Um, it, add, it, ugh. It adds the uh, HTTP to the front of the tech of the string right here. So like if the URL is to start with HTTP, and I really love the starts with method. It's awesome. So we can just write that there's no HTTP, and gives me an error. So then it just adds it, and it loads up the page starting from the doc type, um, from the beginning of the HTML file to the end of slash HTML. So there's a way you can probably customize um, when it starts and when it ends. I mean, you can probably use trim, or I'm not really sure. I've not often really worked with all C sharp methods, but um, I just thought this is this is a really good way for me to learn. So I figured that it would help you guys out as well. But like I said, you can get certain values from this. It's just a um, matter of trimming it and finding things in this. Like you can actually search in the. Uh, in this field, like let's just say I, I could I can do if data um, equals or has an instance of there's there's methods for that and if you know Java you probably know that method I just can't think of it off the top of my head right now but uh, yeah so like I said it's pretty cool and we held up the console so now we can just press any key to continue so that's all for this C sharp tutorial have a good day guys.